Was he a man but, of the Victorian era, and he couldn't change what the society was changing? Jazz A's came in. I think certain, certain of his sentiments were uh, perhaps in a, in a Victorian fashion with uh, with women, but in, in, in other ways, he's uh, he's not that quite uh, that sentimental. I think he's got a warmer heart than most people. I don't think it often is very cloying at all. Uh, I, I am I am moved to tears sometimes by the, his sheer simplicity. That he he can speak uh, directly to you, uh, in a in a warm uh, fashion, and yet you know there are cynical sides to him um, that come through in the films as well. I mean the uh, the boy is about to be executed in the, in the modern story of intolerance. You know, and the, the guy comes there in the prison and says, "Oh, death is just a scientific fact." Pats him on the back and walks away. Uh, you know, uh, don't worry about it. Uh, injustice is here. I mean, he he he's, he thinks it's frightening that uh, people could be hanged unjustly. Uh, Sound error coming in. America, uh, um, Abraham Lincoln, the struggle. His career is coming to an end at this point. Well, I don't particularly like Abraham Lincoln, but photographically, it's not bad. It's certainly more, more progressive than some of the films being made at that time. It was, after all, it was shot in uh, uh, January, February, March, in that period, uh, 1930, which is pretty darn early. But he does vary his camera. Uh, the acting pretty much is very good. A couple of scenes, it, it may be over, over the, the, the edge. Uh, one scene there where uh, Walter Houston's got a lot of makeup on, like, like a clown face almost. That scene was not shot by Griffith, and he was very unhappy with it. Uh, it's not a great work. Uh, it, it had a, a lot more of... Uh, it had a scene... With the, the the blacks living in the cabins on at Lofty Green when he was a kid, that's in there. Auntie Easter's in there, named as I recall. That was cut, but it's in the script, and I believe it was filmed. Uh, so that's rather autobiographical, and it's certainly not pro-slavery. Uh, but. Uh, that he ended up doing Lincoln again. I mean, after all, it's a biographical, an episodic film about Lincoln, which is not exactly uh, maybe what people wanted to see. I don't know whether he would have done making a... He was thinking after that to do a crime melodrama, and that maybe would have been a much better choice than doing The Struggle, which is about the evils of drink, uh, which was really the old play drink, which uh, he should have stayed away from. It's got some nice moments in it, but uh, that killed him, absolutely killed him. That, that well, ruined him. The actors you were impressed that he discovered, worked with in his films, anybody that stands out that are your favorites? Well, a guy who has almost no... Uh, no one's ever praised him, really, but I think Bobby Harron is excellent. I think he gives a very good modern performance in everything. I think he played him like a violin. Very good. May Marsh sometimes is good, sometimes I jumping around because it's a little much for me. Uh, Lillian also was a little twittery, but that seems to be her. But those are all his heroines. Yes, well, Mary Pickford was, and she wasn't twittery. She told me when I interviewed her that Mr. Griffith wanted to chase me, wanted me to chase the rabbits around the trees. Well, I didn't want to chase the rabbits around the trees, <laughs> and I wouldn't do it. In the early days when you had a close-up of a dog, it was cute. Later on, it was like, enough of the dogs. It's like, too yeah. sentimental. Well, I suppose, I don't know, a, kid, a shot of a baby and a shot of a kitten or an, or an animal isn't bad 
and it's a good way of telegraphing that this is a good person rather than a bad person. To me, his style was tab tableau camera placement. It's like he was making moving a picture moving. Does that make sense? Montage and everything else to me came on later on with Eisenstein. People moved the camera, side angles, everything was placed. The action is right in front of you. Well, I, what, I guess the term is for that is frontality, isn't it? I mean, he tended to have, when he worked inside, he would take off the fourth wall. And that was it. He would shoot straight on. He wouldn't go to the, as you said, you don't go to the side, you don't do a reverse angle, things or, like that. Or a close-up could be a week later and not match. Yes. That is true. Um, but I, no, I think the montage is, um, is there. It's not flashy in the same way as Eisenstein. But you know, Eisenstein doesn't wear that well in some ways because it's cold. And it's also all presto. He doesn't slow up. He never has a human moment, really. Uh, we don't know for a moment, for example, that baby in the baby carriage in, um, in, the, in Potemkin. There's not one moment before that the, that the, the, uh, the mother is breastfeeding him or uh, tucking a blanket around him or something like that. It's just baby. It's not anybody's baby. It's just baby. Not that I'm criticizing, but there's a lack of warmth. I thought maybe, when I first started, I thought Griffith was corny. And I loved Einstein. He was my real hero. But I can, I can see that that, I, I think Pichemkin, the whole film is almost wearisome because it just keeps going on. You know, the first three sh shots of the waves crashing against the sea. Clink, clink, clink. And then, you know, the, the breaking of the, of the dish and the jumping off the side of the boat and all the rest of it just goes on and, and on and on. There's no, and, I, and Eisenstein himself said he had no, said on his deathbed, really, you know, I never understood the world. I never understood myself. Uh, I really didn't understand humanity. It's abstract. And I think he, as he, lay there on his deathbed, I think he, he, uh, he obviously, he said this, that he missed it all. And I'm not so sure <laughs> Griffith had it so much in his own life either, uh, but he knew, uh, his film depicts, as I said earlier, the uh, warm, uh, the, the home life, um, the mother and the father, a, a, a family unit. A concept, at least, of what life ought to be. Some, something that if you're lying on your deathbed, somebody gives a damn, even to visit you. Yeah. You know? Are your friends going to visit you when you're dying? Maybe. One or two show up, particularly if you owe them something. How did Griffith's life... <laughs> Not last, to sound cynical. The last few years of his life, how did it end? People think he was alcoholic, drunk, you know... <sighs> Well, the alcohol business is, uh, is uh, much uh, exaggerated also. Uh, I think for quite a while, I mean, sometimes he would, he didn't do much drinking beforehand. I think when he lost his studio, he did some drinking, uh, and then he would maybe go on a binge. There's no doubt about that. In the early 30s, he was on a binge, and then he would be pretty sober, and then he'd have a few drinks and feel a little affable, but who... who how many of us don't feel a little bit more affable and uh, well, Look what's and happening warm. with in the movies in the 30s is growing by leaps and bounds, and yes. he's not a part of it anymore. No, he's not a part of it, and that must hurt, hurt, hurt plenty. Uh, and then you'd say, well, why wouldn't somebody hire him? Well, uh, you wouldn't trust him on a big thing because he always went excessive. And he didn't always listen. He was own boss so long. I don't know whether he would ever play any, really, um, be a good hired hand. He was never a good hired hand, even when he was younger. He was difficult. He learned to be a boss. He learned to be a boss, and he. Uh, at a certain point, I think he told Hal Roach, "You know, go to hell," and he walked out. Uh, I think he would like to go back in it. And then there were a couple of opportunities with Preston Sturges, and I, he shot himself in the foot with it because I think he, he panicked. I don't want to fail again. 
I have a, a little bit to live on. Why should I go through the humiliation? And if I do badly again, that last one must have, the struggle must have been a terrible, terrible thing. He did go on a bender on that one. But that's a little bit exaggerated. He wasn't a drunk for the next 20 years. That's a lot of baloney. I think when his wife left him to go back because her mother was sick, she went back to nurse her mother in New York. Then he was by himself. And then he had nothing else to do but more or less drink. Except for his old cronies, no one gave a damn anymore. They didn't want to hear the story of intolerance anymore. And, and uh, he, you know, he, he, dead issue.